Hi, welcome to Blytheway Business News. Today we're joined by Mark Frankham, the Financial Director of NMR. Welcome. Mark, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Can you start by giving us a bit of an overview of NMR and what it is exactly that you do? Of course I can. We collect mm -hmm. uh, and test samples of milk uh, for farmers, for dairy companies and for retailers. Um, when a farmer is paid for his milk, it's not just the volume that's collected that he's paid for. Uh, if, if that milk has got more constituent quality in it, uh, then we can make more stuff out of it, more fat, more yogurt, more butter. Of course. Uh, yeah. And so he gets paid more for it. And somebody independent of the, the buyers, the dairies, and the producers, the farmers, uh, does that measurement, and that's, that's us. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, for the farmer, uh, the way that he optimises that payment of milk is that he does yeah. similar measurements uh, on a cow-by-cow -cow basis, typically mm -hmm. every month, uh, and then he can use that information to breed improvement into his herd. Right. Uh, and we test about 30,000 samples mm. of milk every day. Uh, we visit uh, every dairy farm in the UK wow. every day. How many are there, roughly? Yeah. Uh, farms, mm. oh golly, that's a good question, about, uh, about eight or 9,000. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, so it's a lot. And uh, mm. the, um, our, the herd, the national herd, is about two million cows. Uh, so, you know, it's, mm. it's a big industry that we all engage with every day. But we every sort day, of, we coffee, drive, yogurt, butter, right? We drive <laughs> past these, uh, these mm. fields with, with black and white things in. But yes, that's, uh, mm. it's, it's a big, big industry. And you've got quite an interesting history as well, don't you? Like I was reading about the original dairy farmers that... Yeah, yeah. We, we, we were part of uh, the Milk Marketing Board. Mm. Uh, so, uh, you know, after the Second World War, the dairy industry, like many others, was, uh, was, was brought together to, to manage essentially the food supply for the country. Mm. Uh, and the Milk Marketing Board was created and brought together the, the farmers, the processors, the hauliers, uh, and other parts of the industry, like the, the milk recording part, uh, and in the 90s, that was, uh, that was deregulated, and we, like other businesses, were spun out of it at that time. Right. Uh, and we, uh, you know, the core business was very much the same, uh, but we floated in 2006 uh, and have basically been growing the business since then uh, and uh, have, uh, have now got a, a, a strong revenue stream, not only in the, the, the farmer side of the business, which is the individual cow testing, but also the, the payment testing side, uh, which is the, the, the payment testing, so it's bulk tank right. testing for the dairy companies. Uh, and uh, we test for other stuff as well. While we've got the milk in the laboratories, we test for uh, things like diseases and mm. contaminants or adulterants and that kind of stuff, giving the assurance that uh, the, the industry and the consumer wants uh, for, their, for their dairy produce. Well, it's good to know. Good to know we're in safe hands. And um, you released your interim results this morning. Can you give me the highlights of these? We did, yes. We, uh, we released results for the six months ending uh, December 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had, uh, we had a strong trading period again, I'm, I'm pleased to say. Uh, turnover grew uh, by about uh, 11%. Uh, EBITDA was up by 15% uh, on the same period last year. But those numbers were boosted a bit by some one-off uh, mm. benefits that we had in the first quarter. We have most of our business is sort of underlying. Dairy is a, an all day, every day kind of business. Cows mm. get milked every day, milk gets tested every day. Uh, and we had a couple of boosts uh, in the first quarter of the year, which of course is in the, the interims, uh, which were uh, a one-off set of tests uh, for a, um, an index to measure uh, the likelihood of TB in cattle. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we did a, a series of genomic tests for a customer uh, in the first quarter. Uh, and we also had the benefit of some grant activity uh, to boost sales of um, a particular kind of monitoring system. So there, you know, as, as compared to our underlying picture and underlying trading picture, those were some one-off boosts that we had uh, in, in that first half. So trading good. Uh, and uh, we used uh, the benefits of that trading to continue to invest in the business. Uh, we um, had capital investment in the first half of, of about 320,000. Uh, and we also um, significantly paid a dividend in November. 
mm -hmm. uh, two and a half pence per share, which was the first time uh, in about eight years that we've done that, so quite a milestone for us. Uh, and on the back of all of the, uh, the, the trading and the investment and the dividend paid, we still managed to reduce debt uh, a little as well by the end of, uh, of December. So to 0 0.7 times EBITDA, so quite a healthy gearing in the company as well. It's been a good year for you. So far, yeah. And uh, following the dividend, were you tempted to um, declare an interim dividend or...? Well, we've been prioritising and focusing on that investment in the mm. business. So uh, we're, we're getting the, the business ready for, for growth. Uh, we're uh, investing in our laboratory systems uh, and in our back office systems. Uh, but we're also investing in our, in our people and in our processes and um, preparing ourselves um, to, be, you know, to be ready uh, for the growth that we've got in our planning. Uh, and we... Uh, we predict that we're going to carry on doing that in the second half of the year. Uh, so any, any sort of final dividend the board will consider uh, in the summer. That's good anyway, it sounds like things are going very well. And uh, looking at the, the market in general, how are things looking for the UK dairy market? Well, um, I guess there's a, there's a sort of near-term picture. I mean, March 29th is looming, right? But. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there are also other, other interesting things going on. So um, if you compare where we are now to a year ago, uh, milk supply uh, is much better. So milk volumes are predicted to be quite strong this year. Of course, last year we had the beast from the east, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which um, reduced uh, volume uh, in the spring, but we also had a very dry summer. Uh, so we're sort of coming out of that now. The autumn uh, was a better period uh, for dairy production, so um, volumes are strong as we move into the spring. And, and of course that's all affected by what, less grass, the cows produce less milk. Exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's, um, yeah, it, mm. exactly, it's a, it's a natural extension of that. Yeah. Um, but of course more milk, you know, um, can affect prices, so milk prices are tightening a little. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, if you couple that with, with the fact that um, uh, the cost of production on farm have gone up, so mm. Um, on the back of the weather that we've just described, farmers have been, been feeding their cattle in the winter using um, uh, and into the spring based on um, uh, their, their, their forage. So they've run out of forage uh, and the costs of replacing that are high. So costs of production are going up, milk prices are tightening, mean, means that margins on farm are tightening. Right. Uh, and we see that you know, farmers will continue to be, uh, you know, continue to be careful uh, with their with their money and their investing, uh, but we believe that that the services we provide in terms of giving them the information to run their farm efficiently and effectively are important against that backdrop. The Brexit thing's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, we there's still a lot of uncertainty, of course. Um, particularly, we we have a, a joint venture in the south of Ireland, uh, as well as. Um, uh, operations in the north, so we, we have uh, milk recording customers in, in the north. Uh, and so the movement of raw milk and dairy commodities across the Irish border, mm. um, you know, which happens every day, you know, needs to be, there needs to be a practical answer to. And there's no answer at present, is there, like, no. people really just... No, we don't know, we sort of, you know, there, there's, uh, we just hope that, you know, they'll, mm. they'll, they'll be sensible about it. But, you know, clearly there's some uncertainty. And, there might be, you know, there might be a little bit of disruption. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's a matter of weeks away now, so uh, we need more certainty there. But the medium-term picture is good. Um, you know, people um, want to know more about uh, their food. They want to know more about mm. the provenance of, of what they're eating and consuming. Uh, and the industry, you know, wants to wants to do more in terms of the, um, you know, the, the assurance about uh, production and. Uh, welfare and the health of, of the supply chain. Mm. So the the the, uh, the tailwinds are good for NMR um, and UK dairy. Uh, so uh, you know we're confident as we move into the second half of the year and going forwards. What about all these people now that they have you have soya milk, you have almond milk, you have oat milk? Has that affected you at all? Or well, there's no the doubt industry? is there that we're all aware of that, mm. right? It's um, uh, it gets quite a lot of airtime, uh, and uh, there's it gets quite a lot of interest, obviously, from consumers. And you know, let's face it as well, it gets it quite, gets um, it gets quite a lot of space uh, in the supermarkets, right? So right. it's it's an interesting part of the category, but the volumes are still small. You know, mm. there's a lot of fresh milk consumed. We're a fresh milk nation. Yeah. pasteurized milk it's you know unlike a lot of Europe 
Uh, so um, yes, it, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting part of the category, but it still remains small compared to the bulk mm. of UK dairy. Of course, it's not just milk, it's cheese, butter, yogurt, I mean, That's ice right. cream, like yeah, the list, exactly. uh, the list yeah, goes on. Uh, yeah, there's a lot, yeah, yeah. So what, are you, what is your focus for the next six months? Well, the uh, uh, the next six months. Let, let's just you know we sail past Brexit and right. into the future. Well, so. that's not going to happen, but <laughs> <laughs> we can hope. But uh, you know, after 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 that, we'll we'll just continue mm. to do the things that we're doing. You know, continue mm. to get the small things right. Uh, we'll be focusing on our core business. Uh, we'll be focusing on continuing to invest in our capability and our infrastructure, mm -hmm. uh, and positioning ourselves ourselves through the remainder of this financial year and into next. Uh, such that you know we can we can um, innovate and bring new services which will uh, be of benefit to our customers and benefit to to UK dairy. Great. Well, let's hope we sail past Brexit and uh, all goes uh, to plan. <laughs> well, no plan. No, no plan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mark, that's all we've got time for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.